What's up, y'all? I'm back out here on the range on another bright, sunny day. Blue skies. Temperature's only supposed to be right around 80, so it should be a perfect day to get some testing done. I've got a few interesting things on the agenda, and we're going to start it off with a little bit of nine mil. So, of course, the jelly contraption's out here, fresh face, ready to roll for the day. we got the couple of chronos and two fresh blocks of gel. First test of the day here, so a really nice, clear picture on this one here. Heavy clothing barrier, as always, with a layer of denim, fleece, and two layers of cotton t-shirt and what we got here along with a bunch of shadows early this morning is some stuff that was sent to me by pete a while ago along with the 380 version of this same stuff it's the pilgrim ammo torch rounds so again this one here is the nine mil plus p version it's a 50 grain supposed to be moving at 2,000 feet per second a little bit of ballistics on the box here this is a solid copper round it's a fragmenting round it's basically it's supposed to act just like the liberty civil defense type stuff again 2,000 feet per second if it does hit that we're looking at over 400 foot pounds of energy so that would be nice if it actually does hit that now i'm not a huge fan of this stuff in general but some people are and if it works nice it does deliver the results that it claims here's your round here completely plated there you can see the case and the projectile now like i mentioned he also sent the 380 version of this same weight projectile just moving at 1500 or supposed to be moving at 1500 but that stuff just did plain old bad there's no other way no nicer way to say it it just did bad uh the velocity wasn't there it was a good 200 feet per second short in a shorter barrel and my easy and then in the jail you had absolutely nothing happen out of the lcp max and even the easy the foot pounds of energy was just so much lower than it was supposed to be because you were missing all that velocity but hopefully we'll see a little bit of redemption here on the nine mil so i've got a couple of different barrel lengths to run it out of here for the shorty i've got my nine mil edc the canic med a mc9 with the 3.1 one inch barrel and then for the longer one we've got the g17 here with the four and a half inch barrel so it'll be interesting to see if the nine mil actually deliver the velocity that they're claiming if not it's you know it's defeating the whole purpose of this really light fast round if it's not actually fast but hopefully they'll give us something good let me get it all set up and let's see what happens all right let's see how fast this stuff's actually moving i'm going to do a five round average from each one starting with this canic mc9 first now if y'all not familiar with my channel like i always mention this radar is going to give you multiple readings the large numbers at the muzzle and then you've got five across the bottom the first one is set for three yards which is roughly where the gel is here at 10 feet and then you've got 10 15 25 and 50 now remember the box on this is saying 2k shorter barrel i don't expect to totally see that but i should still see close hopefully we don't have a lot of trouble out of this thing too a lot of times with these light fast rounds like this um the velocity so high i have to put it on the longer setting here so it kind of acts up but Maybe we'll get at least a few. I, if it starts acting up, I'll probably just take what I can get out of it. Let's see what we get. 1961, definitely like to see that. <laughs> In an error, definitely don't like to see that. Let's see if we can at least get a few more out of it. 1956. It looks like when I go fast, I've noticed and there's still like maybe a slight shock wave going on that it don't like to get that next one. So I'll just finish these out. I don't have a lot of these and I don't want to run through them in case I have some kind of issues. I didn't get that one either. So that was all of them. I'm going to just tell you right now, I'm going to take what I got right there because this stuff's just going to keep on acting up over and over. So let's see what we had from those two rounds. All right. So just out of those couple of rounds right there, a vastly different experience from the 380. Those were right there at the 2K, 1959. We had one that was 1961 and one that was 1956. So both of them right there together, extreme spread between just those two was only six. Now, obviously it's only a two round average, but I feel pretty comfortable saying this is a whole different story. And we'll have the optical chrono for the third one going into the jail so we'll get to verify that but let me switch it up and see if the g17 will give us a few more all right let's see if we can get some out of this g17 um one other thing i've noticed about this stuff is it's not nearly as loud as a lot of the real fast moving stuff so that might be why it also don't play well with the lab radar 2204 so yeah we hit the 2k that time 
and we hit the error that time. It's weird, it's like it'll give me the one and then the next one it don't wanna hit. I think it's got something to do with just the waves, the energy waves and like the concussion and all ascending through the leaves and stuff out there. Let's give it a couple minutes here. No, maybe my theory don't mean nothing. I'm gonna try to run these and get as many if I can even get another one, but it ain't looking good. 2137, that's on up there right there. That one sounded a little louder even. That one hit that 75 yarder and I still didn't get a doggone reading. So we got two off of that one too. Let's check that out. All right, not the prettiest velocity test in here, but I think we got enough done. So we had a 2170 average there, had 2204 and 2137. So 67 uh, extreme spread on them, two rounds. Again, it was just two rounds. So hopefully we'll get both of them to read over this optical chrono. 2170 on this one, if you remember on the MC9, it was 1959. So you're talking about 211 feet per second difference. Pretty good difference right there for just basically what an inch and a half a barrel well, i guess that's pretty good difference so all that being said i think these right here are actually going to do what they're supposed to this is the velocity that you need to get these to act right where that 380 didn't have it these do so i think we're going to see some good stuff right here let me get it all reset and y'all know what time it is all right y'all it's second chance jelly time we'll put one through inch length into the gel starting with this mc9 first um i painted these things with a sharpie to bullet so hopefully we'll get a good reading over this optical chrono sometimes this has a different kind of problem than the radar does it's the uh, reflection reflects off of these little small silver rounds and it don't get a good reading so maybe this will help and we'll get something here All right, that should have been a good one right there. And we did get a reading 2061. So we actually went over 2000 with this MC9. And that's why I can tell already it did what it was supposed to do. Let's go check that one out. All right, absolutely perfect performance from that one down there. That's exactly what you're supposed to see from that because you got the velocity that you're supposed to get. So G17, I think it's gonna do exactly the same. So let's see what we get. I put that a little lower than I wanted, so this might get tricky. I went a little more right than I wanted. Hopefully everything stayed in though. Let's go see what we got. All right, y'all, I goofed that one up right there. I had perfect, I snuck it into perfect elevation, which is what I was worried about, but then it must have pulled it just a little bit left. It actually got, went in actually really good and then swerved out. So I'm gonna put another one in there just so we can catch the little piece that's left. I think it, there's no problem with what happened. I know it done its thing, but I just wanna catch one more. It's really a shame too, because this stuff takes a lot of space up in the doggone gel. This one might be outside the beams of the chrono, but I ain't fooling with moving all that even. All right, I think I went right above that other one. Hopefully the little piece stayed in. Let's go take a look. All right, let's check out what we got down here, y'all. Absolutely perfect performance from these right here. They did exactly what they're supposed to do. Uh, the one in the middle, that was the first one from the MC9. As you can see, it comes in here, immediate energy dump, immediate energy dump right here. Mass of a bunch of fragmentation there. The little centerpiece keeps on trucking out here to probably, I'm gonna guess about 10, 11 inches, maybe 12, but that's one of my big things about this type of ammo here i don't like the lack of penetration and that little bit of light weight that you got that keeps on going now granted you dumped all of the energy that's over 400 foot pounds right there from all three of these but i've got 124 plus p plus that gives me 400 foot pounds so just not my thing although i know a lot of people do like this kind of stuff so then the second one down here that was the first one from the g17 
2017. As you can see, it comes in very, very nice. Again, incredibly nice energy dump. Lots of fragmentation here. The centerpiece keeps on trucking and it pops out right there. I would be willing to bet though, you would get almost the same exact penetration. That's one thing about these rounds that I will definitely give them credit for. When they work like they're supposed to and don't act like that 380, they're really, really consistent. The Civil Defense stuff has always been incredibly consistent in pretty much all of the calibers and you get nearly the exact same performance. So then the second one from the G17 here, that was the one that ended up on the very top. Same exact thing, there was no doubt about it. Massive energy dump, lots of fragmentation. The centerpiece keeps on trucking and it's probably within a quarter inch of the MC9 there. So again, they usually do exactly what they claim to do very, very consistently no matter what the barrel length. So as far as the penetration on them, the one from the MC9 in the middle there, that one is at exactly 11 inches. And then up above it, the G17 that we actually kept is 10 and three quarters. So right there within a quarter of an inch, a quarter inch of each other. As far as the fragmentation field, that starts, you know, almost immediately within an inch, inch and a half. And the furthest part of the fragmentation from any of them that I can see is out here at about four and a quarter. So that gives you a pretty good idea. As far as the width of that fragmentation field, you got about a four inch width from side to side. And here's your little closer look at them. Again, no doubt, these did exactly what they're designed to do. Absolutely perfect performance from these right here. All three of them, you can see massive amounts of energy dump and fragmentation there. And then if we follow them on through, you can see the little centerpiece from both of them, MC9 there and G17 there. Pretty messy from the top view, but again, you can see just how wide that fragmentation field is. And there's your projectiles, what's left of them. All right, let's check out what's left of these projectiles, y'all. Basically what you see with this type of round every time it does what it's supposed to do, a flat little disc here that lost a bunch of material. It basically breaks off everything around that hollow point all the way down to the cavity and then the little disc keeps going. And that's part of my problem with these. I haven't done a lot of testing to know for sure what they would do if they hit something harder like a bone or you know anything harder like that, any kind of barrier. So that's one of the things I'm just not sure of about it. And again, and just the penetration, the lack of penetration from this stuff just overall in any brand. I'm not picking on this brand, any brand of this stuff right here. I just don't like that lack of penetration. But again, to give credit where credit is due, these did exactly what they were designed to do. So let's get some measurements so you get an idea of what you did actually lose here. The MC9 bow started at 50. This is the MC9. This one is down to 29.0 grains, so a whole lot of loss right there. The G17 is 28.4, so a little more loss from that one even. So that's, you know, that's close to 50% loss there. Not quite 50, but you're creeping up on 50% of total mass lost right there. And then as far as the size of them, I'll get a diameter and then a, a thickness here. So, you know, G17, you're looking at 365 on the diameter with a thickness of 156. Six. And in the MC9 here, you're looking at 364 diameter. And the reason it's a little bit bigger is because the way these things peel out. So it's not just the overall base I'm measuring here. And then the thickness there is 160. And there you have it, y'all, the Pilgrim Ammo 9mm plus P torch rounds. These did, again, exactly what they're designed to do. They got the velocity and then some absolute perfect performance in the gel as far as what they're designed to do. But again, they're just not my thing now. They did get a little redemption over that 380, I suppose. So I wouldn't have any problem running these if this was my thing. Now, based on what the 380 did, do you trust that all the nines gonna be this good or perform like it's supposed to? I mean, that's something you'll have to decide for yourself, but these did do their job. All right, y'all, I'm gonna call it right there for a much better showing this time from the Pilgrim Ammo. This stuff did exactly what it was supposed to do out here today. Again, not really my thing, but I know some people do like this kind of stuff. But let me know what y'all think about it down in the comments. Do any of y'all out there run this Pilgrim Ammo? Do you run the Civil Defense or any other thing really similar to this really fast, light for weight stuff? Let me know down in the comments if you do and let me know what it is that you run. If you enjoyed the video, take a second and hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and make sure you got your notifications turned on so you get notified when I upload new stuff. Take a minute if you would and check out those affiliate links in the video description. Anything you buy after hitting up those links down there, I get a kickback from them towards the channel, so I really do appreciate that. Big thanks to all my Range Gang members and every single one of y'all for supporting the channel. I've got a couple more really interesting tests planned for out here today, so stay on the lookout for those. And in the meantime, stay safe, stay prepared, and I'll see you soon.